In today's show, we're going to talk more about how berberine can improve metabolic health, drawing upon a dossier of recently published clinical trials and review papers, starting with this paper right here. Study of the effect of berberine, myo-inositol, and metformin in women with polycystic ovarian syndrome, a prospective randomized study. What was really interesting about this study, I'll share with you the parameters, is they were comparing the effects of metformin, which is one of the most widely used anti-diabetic drug medications. It actually is derived from a natural product, and that's been used since the 1700s, known as uh, Golgia officinalis. That's, it's a biguanide compound. It's been used for a very long time. They looked at metformin, berberine, and myo-inositol in women diagnosed with PCOS in their late 20s. So the dosages used in the study, they had three different arms of the study. One arm of the study was given berberine, 500 milligrams twice per day, which I will add is on the lower side. The second arm of the study, cohort two, was given 500 milligrams of metformin. This was twice per day as well. And the other group received myo-inositol, just one gram twice per day, which is on the lower side as well. And what they found were significant changes in waist circumference, metabolic health-related param parameters, as well as body composition changes. Now, what they say in this article is berberine was associated with an improvement in various measures of insulin resistance that was well comparable to that of metformin. I will add here, here's just an image so you can see the differences in the structural similarities and differences with metformin and berberine. Again, both are derived from natural compounds and they work similarly but different. As you can see here, the polyphenolic structure of berberine implies that it probably impacts the gut microbiome more so than metformin, but they both lower what's known as hepatic glucose output. So that is the liver's production of glucose declines with both natural compounds. There's also changes in this kinase known as AMPK. And this kinase helps to activate autophagy, inhibit mTOR, which might be helpful in the context of insulin resistance, weight loss, and the like. So the scientists say the notable risk factors for metabolic syndrome and cardiovascular disease are increased in the context of PCOS. And that's characterized by increased waist circumference, waist to hip ratio, and the deranged lipid profile. Berberine improved all these parameters and the data suggests that berberine may have a greater potential to reduce the cardiovascular disease risk than metformin in patients with PCOS. Now again, this is the scientist talking here. This is not me talking. The title from the paper that I showed you, the images, figure one here, on the structural differences between metformin and berberine is titled Metformin and Berberine, Two Versatile Drugs in the Treatment of Common Metabolic Diseases. And they highlight the similarities, but also the differences here. And what's very unique here is, again, both of these compounds are derived naturally. They have a hundred year, well, several hundred year history of use. Metformin was derived in the 1700s. It's been used for a long time. It's now obviously a drug. And we have berberine that's been used in traditional Chinese medicine for 3,000 years. As you can see here, the polyphenolic structure of berberine is similar to the proanthocyanidins and the anthocyanidins found in blueberries, which we know to impact the gut microbiome. And so that's probably more of the mechanism of action of how this drug is working. But what's interesting here is there were decreases in body weight, decreases in waist circumference, decreases in waist to hip ratio and body mass index after just 12 weeks of all of these three different compounds. And I think it's important to acknowledge that there's different tools for different folks. Myo-inositol actually goes under the radar. You know, people don't think about it in the context of improving waist to hip ratios, body circumference, uh, especially in the context of PCOS, but other metabolic health related parameters. Myo-inositol is also safe for men as well as women. And so significant changes in all these parameters with all of these three different compounds. So most people, when they go to the doctor and they find out they have PCOS, they're given spironolactone, and they're also given metformin, but you have other tools. And it turns out that berberine and metformin can be used together and actually have been shown to have synergistic properties and also additive or exponential improvements in metabolic health. So I think some people say, well, I'm taking metformin. I don't need to consider berberine. But uh, ample evidence from this paper, berberine is a potential alternative for metformin with good regulatory effects on lipids in treating metabolic diseases. And what this paper found was mostly animal models in cellular studies, finding there are differences in the mechanism of action of berberine and metformin. So I want to get to changes in the characteristics of waist circumference, differences found in myo-inositol versus metformin versus berberine. But first, friends, just want to say thank you for watching right up to now. Hopefully you found this information helpful. 
Hit that like button if you're enjoying the content. Leave me a comment below. Now, since we're talking about metabolic health here, I just wanted to remind you about the Berberine Fasting Accelerator by Myoscience. This is a tool that can help you curb those evening food cravings. You know, a lot of people crave ice cream, cookies, crackers, and things like that that derail their weight loss progress and their metabolic health related goals. You can see some of the up to 200 different reviews over at myoscience.com. Now, it's important to offer this disclaimer. Nutritional supplements cannot treat, cure, prevent, or diagnose disease. We're talking about optimizing health and berberine might be a tool to help you curb those evening food cravings. I'll put links below in the URL to check out some of the many reviews from people just like you that are using berberine with their last meal to kickstart their fast over at myoscience.com. You can save with the code podcast at checkout. So going back to comparing berberine, metformin, and myelinositol in the context of losing belly fat specifically, the scientists say when comparing the clinical characteristics between groups receiving metformin, berberine, and myelinositol after 12 weeks of therapy, the difference in weight and BMI was insignificant, meaning there were no significant differences between groups. So if you took metformin versus berberine, there was no significant differences in just overall body weight. However, waist circumference decreased significantly between the three different groups. There was a greater reduction in waist circumference in the berberine group compared to the metformin group, implying that there is a mechanistic difference between these two different compounds. Again, one is a drug, one is a natural compound. Both are actually naturally derived, I might add. But the group that received the myelinositol also experienced differences in waist circumference. Now, the waist to hip ratio also showed significant differences. A greater reduction was observed in the berberine group compared to the metformin group. So again, it turns out and I think berberine probably works because it's suppression of appetite. Most people find when they take berberine, they don't crave as much food. And so that's probably impacting their waist circumference and their belly fat because we know that eating cookies, crackers, and ice cream before bed can cause weight gain and derail your metabolic health related improvements. They do say that metformin and myelinositol did not show any superiority over each other in reducing waist circumference and waist to hip ratio in the studied subjects. Okay, now what about hormonal parameters? After 12 weeks of therapy, no significant differences were found in the mean values of total testosterone between the three different groups. The mean change in sex hormone binding globulin between the three different groups was statistically significant. The increase in sex hormone binding globulin between the berberine receiving group was significantly higher than the metformin. However, fasting insulin showed significant differences between the three groups after treatment. There was a greater reduction in serum fasting insulin in the group receiving myo-inositol compared to the group receiving metformin or berberine which is just incredibly fascinating because most doctors are doling out metformin to pretty much everyone who has PCOS or insulin resistance. And here we have a natural B vitamin-like compound known as myoinositol that might even improve fasting insulin better than some of the drugs they're prescribing. Regarding fasting glucose to the fasting insulin index, a significant difference was observed between three groups after treatment. The group receiving the myelinositol showed superiority over the group receiving metformin and berberine in increasing fasting glucose to the fasting insulin ratio. Now, what about other related carbohydrate parameters? Now, you might be saying, who gives a crap about sex hormone binding globulin? Well, if you have polycystic ovarian syndrome, it's known that you want a higher level of SHGB because that can bind up some of the androgens that are creating these cystic factors on the ovarian, ovarian follicles. And also uh, the SHGB was higher in both in the berberine group compared to the metformin and myelinositol receiving groups. I wanted to add that on there. A significant change in the free androgen index between the three groups was also observed. The decrease in free androgen index in the group receiving berberine was significantly more than the group receiving myo-inositol. So again, we're just comparing and contrasting these different therapies. Now, this doesn't mean that you can only consider one therapy should you want to optimize your metabolic or carbohydrate-related parameters if you have um, a, a situation where you have high levels of androgens and carbohydrate intolerance, you could pair myoinositol with metformin and consider berberine as well. And so that's important to acknowledge. There's not competitive mechanistic action here. These are synergistic and they work differently. Myoinositol works differently uh, than the different groups. Now, what about lipid parameters? All the groups showed significant reduction in total cholesterol, serum triglyceride, serum LDL, and an increase in serum HDL cholesterol, meaning all of the lipid-related parameters that we care about, what I care about most specifically, are increases in HDL and a reduction in triglycerides. All groups noted significant changes after 12 weeks of a, I might add, a very low dose of both metformin, berberine, or myoinositol. Now, between the groups, berberine showed a significant change over myoinositol and metformin in all four parameters. 
I know it seems like this is an ad for berberine. I swear, while we're just sharing the research here, this is a natural tool that is so effective. And again, at supporting metabolic health, we're not talking about treating, curing, preventing, or diagnosing disease here. Really important to recognize that berberine impacts triglyceride levels, which is what I really care about. Okay, so let's get to the summary and conclusion and just wrap this up because this is just incredibly fascinating stuff. I don't know why people aren't talking about this more because berberine is really low cost in comparison to the cost of unregulated or uncontrolled polycystic ovarian syndrome or insulin resistance. The present studies showed that berberine had almost similar effects on various parameters as metformin and myelinositol, with the exception of some parameters like waist circumference, waist hip ratio, sex hormone binding globulin, and lipid profiles, where it showed significant improvements over the other groups. These are the words of the authors, not mine. Weigh it all also showed significant improvements in waist circumference, waist hip ratio, and sex hormone binding globin and lipid profile with berberine when compared to metformin. However, they use oral contraceptives and lifestyle modifications as the primary interventions along with the addition of berberine, metformin, and or placebo. In our study, we restricted the participants from using oral contraceptives or any other targeted exercise program for the duration of the study because they wanted to figure out what is the direction of the metabolic and lipid and carbohydrate handling parameters when these different modalities are being used? They were encouraged to follow their normal routine. Another study also confirmed our findings with improvements in clinical metabolic and reproductive parameters with the use of berberine alone. In a recent analysis of 12 randomized clinical trials on the effects of berberine on PCOS patients, it was reported that berberine improved reproductive hormones, total testosterone, sex hormone binding globin, luteinizing hormone, luteinizing hormone to follicle stimulating hormone ratio, lowered fasting and postprandial blood glucose, and improved lipid profile as compared to placebo or no treatment. These findings are in congruence with the results ob obtained in our study. Metformin has been used and will continue to be used in polycystic ovarian syndrome patients. It is the oldest and safest insulin sensitizer for women suffering from PCOS. It's important to acknowledge. However, long-term compliance with metformin could be troublesome for some PCOS patients. So the present study explored two alternative drugs. I should say natural compounds, really. We have an extract known as berberine from Berberis vulgaris, and we also have myelinositol, which is essentially a B vitamin. Berberine was associated with an improvement in various measures of insulin resistance that was well comparable to that of metformin. The scientist words, not mine, uh, YouTube, just so you understand. The notable risk factors for metabolic syndrome and cardiovascular disease are increased. Waist circumference, waist hip ratio, and deranged lipid profile. Berberine improved all these parameters, and the data suggests that berberine may have a greater potential to reduce cardiovascular disease risk than metformin in patients with PCOS. In our study, myelinositol was shown to significantly improve insulin sensitivity compared to metformin. Really important to recognize, and again, here's yet another study which was published in Reproductive Health, Comparative Efficacy of Oral Insulin Sensitizers, Metformin, TZDs, and Ocetol Berberine in Improving Endocrine and Metabolic Profiles in Women with PCOS, a Network Meta-Analysis. The scientists say, for women with PCOS, myelinositol combined with d inositol and metformin combined with TZDs appear to be superior to metformin alone in improving insulin resistance and decreasing total testosterone levels. So essentially what they found is using a combination of different tools is effective. And so I think individuals should consider myelinositol with metformin or myelinositol with berberine, where I think, honestly, using all three uh, I, I really don't see a downside there. If you do metformin, you should consider supplementing with folate and B12. There are drug-induced micronutrient deficiencies linked with metformin. But a range of studies find that inositol and berberine and metformin are quite effective. Here's yet another study. Is myoinositol better than metformin for treating PCOS in overweight patients? And again, this study found that myonositol is quite effective. So you can be using different compounds. Myonositol is dirt cheap. You can find this on Amazon. There's various uh, products out there that you can try and utilize much better than the alternative, which is having polycystic ovaries and the associated metabolic and hormonal health sequela that accompanies that. So berberine is effective. It can be used as a tool to optimize metabolic health. And I think it really works by curbing evening food cravings. Again, that's one of the reasons why I personally use this. You know, if I'm having a sugar craving, a stressful day, I'm traveling, I'm going to be eating out and there might be bread being offered or ice cream or things like that. I take berberine with me because it really is effective at curbing those cravings. So friends, thanks for tuning all the way in. Hopefully you enjoyed this information. I will link some of the articles that we talked about today in the description below. I appreciate you hitting that like button, sharing this video, and we'll catch you on a future one down the road.